CGSCIMB Security says the demise of public bank founder and chairman emeritus Tan Sri Dr. Te Hong Biao is a loss to the lender, but it shouldn't materially affect its outlook since it is backed by a strong management team. In a note today, the research house said Te's demise would trigger a major change in the group's shareholding structure with the potential emergence of new major shareholders. It said the late Te was the bank's largest shareholder with a 23.41% stake, which is worth some 20 billion ringgit. The arrangement by the late Te for these shares is unknown, CGSCIMB said, and the the possibility of mergers and acquisitions for public bank in the future depends on the plans by the person or persons who will inherit these shares. According to Section 92 of the Financial Services Act, individuals are not allowed to own more than 10% of a financial institution's shares unless they already held the stake before June 30, 2013. CGSCIMB said this news could have a near-term knee-jerk effect on the share price of public bank, but there will be limited impact from this on the near-term earnings outlook of the bank. It maintained its ad rating on public bank at 4 ringgit 41 sen, with a target price of 5 ringgit 20 sen apiece. At the close, public bank dipped 0.23% to 4 ringgit 39 for a market capitalization of 85.2 million ringgit. The former DG of the Public Service Department, Dato Sri Muhammad Shafiq Abdullah, is planning a legal suit against those involved in the termination of his service. Muhammad Shafiq, who has served 30 years in public services, said in a statement that he is aggrieved and dissatisfied over his forced retirement, which was effective yesterday. Muhammad Shafiq said his letter of termination was dated December 1st, but he only received it yesterday. He added that he had has never done anything to the detriment of public interest throughout his stint and that his efforts to improve the department's efficiency and service quality did not sit well with certain parties which had a vested interest in public services. He said there were attempts to prevent him from carrying out his duties immediately and efficiently with regard to promotions of public officers and alleged that efforts were made to tarnish his image and reputation, culminating in the termination of of his service. Earlier today, Chief Secretary to the Government, Tan Sri Muhammad Zuki Ali, said Muhammad Shafiq's service was terminated in line with existing regulations, which accorded him all retirement benefits due to him. The decision was said to have been vetted by the Attorney General's chambers. Prime Minister Dato Sri Anwar Ibrahim says he has instructed all government departments to formulate and develop suitable measures to implement targeted subsidies by taking into consideration the interests of consumers and the industries. He said this in a statement issued after chairing the National Action Council on Cost of Living meeting. Anwar, who is also the finance minister, said Malaysia must channel bulk subsidies, which also benefit the super-rich and conglomerate towards supporting the bottom 40% income group, middle 40% households and small business owners who are particularly affected by the rising cost of living. He cited as an example the Naga National, which has almost 10 million consumers, but 10% or 1 million of whom are the conglomerates, which enjoy more than 50% in electricity subsidies given. The meeting at Perdana Putra was also attended by his two deputies, Dato Sri Dr Ahmad Zahid Hamid and Dato Sri Fadilah Yusuf, as well as Chief Secretary to the Government, Tan Sri Muhammad Zuki Ali and other ministers. IT Max System, which gained 29% on its maiden trading day, plans to increase AI video surveillance facilities in the capital city of Kuala Lumpur to 50,000 over the next 10 years as part of its expansion plans. The homegrown provider of smart city solutions says its expansion plans include the provision of video surveillance facilities to KL City Hall and lock-up facilities belonging to the police, leasing of telecommunication towers and 
monopoles and supply and installation of networked systems. It aims to eventually expand the video surveillance facilities to all major cities in the country. ITMAX MD and CEO William Tan told reporters after the company's listing on Bursa Malaysia's main market today that the company currently has 5,000 AI cameras in Kuala Lumpur, compared to around 1,000 cameras in 2018. To cover blind spots, 50,000 cameras will have to be installed. IT Max surged to an intraday high of one ringgit 55 sen, a 44.86% premium to its listing price of one ringgit 7 sen. The stock then padded its gains to close at one ringgit 38 sen, still up 28.97% for a market value of 1.42 billion ringgit. Trading volume swelled to 130.77 million, more than seven times the 18.53 million in the first trading hour. M Investments Bank expects glove makers to slip into the red or book wider losses, especially for the fourth quarter of 2022 and the first quarter of 2023, as average selling prices fell in December following a period of relative price stabilization. This was based on its channel checks with glove makers under its coverage, namely Top Glove Corp, Harta Lega Holdings, and Kosan Rubber Industries. M Investments said the situation is also expected to be worsened by elevated operating expenditure, especially natural gas, and lower economies of scale as a result of suboptimal plant utilisation rates. Still, it believes some price improvements could start in the second quarter of 2023, driven by the customer replenishment cycle. M Investment trimmed the fair value for Hartalega to 1 ringgit 59 sen from 1 ringgit 87 and cut Kosans to 1 ringgit from 1 ringgit 19 sen while keeping a fair value of 60 cent for Top Glove. The firm also maintained its neutral call on the glove sector, with a sell call on Top Glove and hold calls on Hartalega and Kosan given the continuing supply-demand imbalance seen for the next two quarters. Top Glove saw its shares fall 4.85% to 78.5 sen. Harta Lega settled 3.09% lower at 1 ringgit 57 and Kosan ended trading today 1.83% lower at 1 ringgit 7 sen. <laughs> 